the evolution of popular art and artistic movements in America, post-World War II to now. As history has shown, during times of great drama and war, art has gone comatose. When people are spending every second of the day trying to stay alive, the impact it has on art is shown for generations. The collective trauma of World War II has deeply affected Western art. America, having emerged from World War II in relatively better condition than most, led New York to emerge as the new capital of the art world. With our economy on the rise, as well as an influx of American artists inspired by the European avant-garde movement, combined with an influx of artists who fled Europe after or during the war. Post-World War II American Art Rather than a style or a set of ideals, post-war American art merely de defines a time period and is most often used by auction houses to refer to art created between 1945 and 1970. Dawson's, or a person who acts as a guide, typically a volunteer in a museum, art gallery, or zoo, in art museums often give their interpretations of the piece, or the generally accepted interpretation. While this can be informative, it can also lead to inadvertently mirroring the biases of the institution in which they work. Understanding how our looking and teaching is informed by biases and notions from the past that clings to an artwork in the modern world can help people understand the nuances of the artwork. For younger or more marginalized audiences, art museums still represent the authority, whiteness, and power of the old art world and the biases they still hold. These deeply held biases can be highlighted best in what is known as primitivism. The term coined at the end of the 19th century refers to the art of Africa, the Pacific, and Native America. Though it may have started as a positive term, as time went on, the negative connotations became apparent. With undertones of colonialism and racism, this genre may have started as a way to show the beauty of African, Pacific, and Native American artwork, but it changed into a way to demean it. In distinguishing the art this way, it takes the entire art history of a people, or even several groups in this instance, and just lumps it into one. Instead of teaching the intricacies of different genre styles and movements, it has all been generalized into primitive art. From 1970 to now is considered contemporary art. Strictly speaking, the term contemporary art refers to art made and produced by artists living today. Contemporary art, however, is a broad umbrella term that encompasses many art movements from the 1970s to present day, as well as many of artists that are considered contemporary artists are no longer still alive, considering that the contemporary art movement has existed since the 1970s. Next, we have abstract impressionism. Abstract Impressionism signaled a new age of American artistic expression in the immediate post-war period, the late 1940s to the 1950s. This movement was about the painting of subjects such as scenes, portraits, landscapes, whatever, but in an Impressionist style, with an emphasis on varying measures of abstraction. In this era, most people often painted en plein air, meaning that they would paint the scene or landscape with the right in front of them outside, instead of using a reference. The objective of this style was to create the impression of something, take how something looks, and mix it with how it feels. Abstract Impressionism has been considered a result of the artist's deviation from the expressionistic aggressiveness of the 40s and the simultaneous embracing of both new abstraction techniques and more traditional roots of nature and lyrical appreciation. The next artistic movement is Neo-Dadaism. Neo-Dada is a revival of the previous Dada movement in the early 19th century. This was a movement in art and literature based on deliberate irrationality and negation of traditional artistic values. Dada was formed in a negative reaction to the horrors and folly of the First World War and led to art, poetry, and performance, often satirical and nonsensical. In the 1950s, Rauschenberg, Johns, and others began to include popular imagery and absurdist contrast in their work. The resurgence has many of the same values as the first wave of European Dadaism, however the American ver version takes it more ironic and humorous. Neo-Dada was inspired in reaction to abstract impressionism in a tendency to yield readily to the emotions of the artist. Utilizing popular imagery, absurdist contrast, as well as its use of modern materials, Neo-Dada is more of a counterculture art movement than anything, a reaction to what abstract impressionism had lacked. Our next movement is pop art. Being the dominant movement in the 1960s, pop art stands for popular art, not the most creative name, yet this movement was like no other. It used common household objects and made them the point of interest. As said by Andy Warhol, all the great modern things that the abstract impressionists tried so hard not to notice at all. Andy Warhol being one of the most prolific and infamous pop artists of all time. For an absolute vibe change, minimalism is our next artistic movement. Minimalism is an extreme form of abstract art developed in the USA in the 1960s, represented by artworks composed of single geometric shapes with an emphasis on rectangles and squares. Minimalism first emerged in the 1950s to early 1960s. Artists such as Frank Stella were the forerunners of this movement. 
With Frank Stell's beginnings in the abstract world of action painting, his departure from the gestural art of the 50s to the minimalistic style of the 60s is quite the jump. Minimalism is the extension of the abstractions of gestural painting. With abstract art, we often assume it is trying to imitate something else, like how with Impressionism, the objective was to get the impression down. However, with minimalism, it completely divorces from that idea. Instead of the classic abstractions, it takes the idea that art should have its own reality and not be an imitation or representing an aspect of the real world. Yet with minimalism, there is no attempt to recreate or imitate something from life. Instead, the artist intends to force the viewer only to consider what is in front of them. This art doesn't have any deeper meaning or function than what you see. Minimalist painter Frank Stella famously said about his paintings, what you see is what you see. Our next art movement is conceptual art. Conceptual art, though it emerged shortly after minimalism, was practically its antithesis. Conceptual art, much like the name, is all about the concepts. The thoughts and ideas behind the work are more important than the finished work itself. Marcel Duchamp is often seen as an important forefather of conceptual art, and his ready-made Fountain of 1917 is cited as the first conceptual artwork. This genre goes hand-in-hand -hand with neo-dadaism. Though these art forms have similar ideologies with the concepts and ideas of the artwork mattering more than the physical artwork, However, the main difference is that neo-Dada artists' objective was to provoke and subvert the dominant social order, while conceptual artists wanted their art to be the point of interest instead of the artists themselves. They wanted you only to consider what you can see. Next, we have land art. Land art considered an offshoot of conceptual art and in tandem with the ecological movements of the 60s. Land artists challenged traditional modes of art making and aimed to reach a wider public. Similar to the installation art that is often seen nowadays, these artists worked in tandem with the environment to create their pieces. Robert Smithson is famous for his involvement with this movement as well as his spiral jetty piece. Consisting of black basalt, limestone, and earth, Smithson constructed a large spiral that extends into the Great, Lo Great Salt Lake in Utah. This art form aims to make the connections between man and nature the focal point with works that naturally integrate into the local environment. Our next artistic movement is photorealism slash hyperrealism. Having gained popularity in the mid-70s, hyperrealism and photorealism may sound like the same thing, but are, in fact are not. Photorealism is a genre of art in which an artist studies a photograph and then attempts to reproduce the image as realistically as possible in another medium. Hyperrealism, however, is a genre of painting and sculpting resembling a high-resolution photograph. Hyperrealism is considered as an advancement of photorealism by the methods used to create the resulting paintings or sculptures. Pattern and Decoration, an intense but short-lived avant-garde art movement spanning the early 1970s through the mid-1980s. This movement was about creating brash, colorful, and unique abstract works. Spanning any medium possible, figuration was not unheard of, and the absurd, decorative, and gaudy were a staple of this genre. The subject matter and presentation are unapologetically uninhibited and aimed towards a radical redefinition of beauty. Last but not least, coming into the 80s and the 90s, graffiti slash street art not only became a major genre of popular art in America, but all over the world. With genre frontrunners like Banksy and Keith Haring, it is easy to tell that this movement is more than just about the style of the art. Some of the most prolific and well-remembered political art emerged from the 80s to 90s. At the height of the AIDS epidemic, Keith, Haring was, Keith Haring's art was so monumental and impactful on the queer community, being the means affected mostly by the epidemic. Still seen today with the continued popularity of the genre, the artists of this time are still held in such a high regard it shows just how important this movement really was in America.